All right, next up, let's talk about UDP. So UDP communication looks quite a bit different than TCP. And so UDP, as we saw before, has some certain advantages to it. So let's talk about those advantages and let's talk about a couple things around UDP. So what we'll be talking about is, first of all, the differences between TCP and UDP and what the differences are between those, some of the weaknesses and the strengths with UDP, some protocols that are associated with UDP, and then we'll wrap this up with taking a look at the UDP header. And this, this will be a pretty quick one that we'll go through because UDP is actually pretty simplistic. It's not as exciting and doesn't have as many components that TCP has, but it does. it is associated with a lot of cool protocols. So that in, it, in itself is kind of cool about UDP, but it doesn't have as, as much interesting components that are happening within UDP. Okay, we saw where TCP was associated with reliability versus UDP is all about speed and getting that data over there in a timely manner. For that reason, we have a smaller header that's with, within this. We do not resend data. We do not sequence data. So if there is gonna be any kind of sequencing, it's gotta be upper layer protocol. Otherwise, it just doesn't matter what data, what order that data comes in. We, and it's connectionless. So with TCP, we talk about how it established a connection. So these connections uh, were established before communication happens. So some examples of UDP, or what protocols use D UDP, are things like voice over IP and video conferencing would both use the advantages of UDP to get data to its destination in a timely manner. So one of the things about UDP that's its strength is to send or stream that data across to it. So here our example is, is we've got these, these little tiny segments that we're sending over. So before, if you remember that my segments or packets were represented by big, bigger labels here, but these are gonna be really small as it gets sent over. And it's gonna be just a continuous stream, usually. You know, it'll be a continuous stream, like if you're talking about voice over IP, then it'll just continually send, send those things out. Now, if that device were to hold on to that data till it became a bigger chunk and then send it over, in these bigger chunks, then the person on the other side of the line would get these huge chunks and the, the voice either would be kind of garbled or it would be delayed. Um, there could be significant delays between the two sides of the conversation. So it wouldn't be ideal. So that's why voice over IP and video conferencing will use these UDP frames or these UD, UDP segments and so that it can stream that audio or stream that video across to the other side. Now, because of this, it doesn't keep track of things like drop packets. Usually, it doesn't really matter with UDP packets, so whether it gets to the other side or not. And so it, if a packet gets dropped, it doesn't do any kind of retransmission. The other thing is there's no sequencing involved into this. So when it gets to the other side, it's just going to play back the data in the sequence it was given. And so if there is some bad uh, delays or something, that's when you're talking on the phone, if it's voice over IP, and you get some garbled sounds to it, or you see some artifacts that are happening if you're watching uh, a TV or you're watching, you're streaming some video or YouTube, and you've got some really bad connection, then you'll start seeing some artifacts and some uh, blocks that come up. And, uh, and that's because it's not getting enough data, not enough data data is streaming across there. So, you know, there are times when you still want some reliability or you still want some packets or some frames to be resent, some packets to be resent, some segments to be resent. And so in those scenarios where you want some sort of reliability, but you want to use UDP, then possibly you use some sort of upper layer protocol to help mitigate that issue. But for the most part, UDP is not responsible for any kind of that. It doesn't establish a connection. It doesn't have sequencing and it doesn't have any kind of um, mechanism to resend lost data. There are some examples that use this. Uh, some protocols that use this would be simple network management protocol, TFTP or trivial file transfer protocol, voice over IP, or something like the network time protocol. These are some protocols that all utilize UDP for their protocols.
So once again, as I mentioned, UDP headers are pretty basic. There's not a whole lot to it. Remember, each one of these is a bit and eight of those is a byte. So we've got 32 bits across here and we see that we still need a source and a destination port and those operate just the same as they would with a TCP header. Uh, we have the length of the data that's involved in here or the total length of this segment. So that's important information. And then we have the checksum. So that way we can make sure when it gets to the other side that it is in truly, truly accurate information and nothing has been altered along the way. So that was quick and dirty. We ran through it. That's uh, TCP and UDP. We talked about some of the strengths and weaknesses that UDP has. We talked about some of the protocols that are associated with it. And then we took a look at the UDP header. So that's UDP in a nutshell. I hope these videos are really helping you out. If it is, could you hit that like button?